Previously on MasterChef, the best home cooks in America welcome, welcome. took their place in the MasterChef kitchen. This is the Coliseum. But the very first mystery box came with an unwelcome surprise. One of you will be going home. What? From mystery box? Astrid, your time is done. The elimination test delivered highs. It's pretty killer. Keep an eye on this one, guys. And lows. You've taken a TV dinner and turned it into a TV disaster. And Whitney became the second home cook eliminated. Tonight, it's an all-out culinary war. Here they come! You don't realize what 500 soldiers looks like. In the biggest, most explosive team challenge in MasterChef history. That roll. And then, a pressure test threatens to send a favorite home. Come on. You need to put that in the oven. It all happens right now on MasterChef. Our 20 remaining home cooks have been dropped off 200 miles from the MasterChef kitchen in the Mojave Desert for their first team field challenge. This is the first team challenge. I'm big, I'm hot, I'm uncomfortable. I mean, I could have been surfing in Malibu and I'm going, what the hell? I'm Scottish in the desert. What are we doing here? Are we gonna cook an egg on a rock? Suddenly, in the distance, we see come two bloody helicopters and two trucks just driving and flying towards us, creating a massive sandstorm. Well, I was in the military, and seeing these helicopters come in brought me back to the days I used to jump out of helicopters for a living. And uh, man, my adrenaline is just pumping right now. It looks like some serious stuff's about to go down. And boom, it's the judges. Right, everyone, listen. You have a very, very critical challenge to undertake today. Francis B. Yes, sir. Because you had the best dish in the last challenge, you will be a team captain. Being team captain, first team challenge, I am up for this opportunity. I can definitely lead this team. Grab that. Clearly, captain the red team. All right. Now, quickly select nine individuals to join your team. Oh, wow. It's a huge advantage to get to pick your whole team right off the bat. But Gordon's like, now, we gotta go. So I gotta put something together quick. Hurry up, come on. Time's off the essence. Cutter, let's go. Tyler, come on up. Tyler and Cutter, I feel like, really know their meats. Victoria. Victoria, she'd know what to do with maybe side dishes or work in the grill. Francis. In the truck. Francis L, he's quirky, he's funny, he's a strong competitor. Uh, Willie. Let's go, big Willie. Willie, he could bring the finesse. Come on, Francis. Christine. I'm playing out everything really quickly in my head, like who would work well together, who are the people I've seen do well in the challenges. Elizabeth. Aran. One more, one more. Uh, let's go, um... Come on, Francis B. Kira, let's go. Francis B, that's it. All right. That's our leader right there. The rest of you, you are the blue team. Yes, let's yeah. go blue. I'm looking around at my blue team, and I'm thinking, like, we're doomed. We have no people that know how to work under pressure. We have a lot of weak links. You need to choose a captain now. Now. Daniel. Daniel. I see enough eyes glance my way, and I hear the majority of people say, Daniel. Who is it? Daniel. I'm the captain. So I stepped up, and I raised my hand, and um, I was ready to be the team captain. Blue team, get in the truck. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. This is Colonel Ward. I'm the commander of the 11th Armor Cavalry Regiment. This is Colonel Braga with the US Army. He's here to tell you more. You're driving through the National Training Center, Fort Irwin, California, one of the country's premier tactical training facilities. Our brave men and women train here in an area that's roughly the size of Rhode Island. 
Many of them are currently involved in live tactical ground and airborne training exercises as we speak. You're all about to undertake a very, very important mission. You'll be out of your element, and you will have to cook in the elements in a field kitchen. Today, you will be feeding 500 soldiers. Wow. Excuse me? 500? Hungry soldiers? Are you kidding me? Guys, this is almost an impossible mission. This is more people than we've ever had home cooks serve in any challenge ever. Woo. We want one grilled meat, one side, an amazing sauce to go with that protein. Listen carefully. You'll have two hours to prep your meal and another two hours to serve it. Clear? Yes, sir. We got this. My brother was a Marine, and uh, my dad served in Vietnam, so this is really important to me. I really want to do right by these soldiers because of the sacrifices they make. It's a big deal to me. I couldn't think of a better group of people to honor and respect because these guys are putting their lives on the line every day for my freedom. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. The teams now have just two hours to prep a hearty meal for 500 soldiers who will vote for their favorite dish. Along with a side and a sauce, the teams have a choice of beef, chicken, or pork to serve as their protein. I think we should do the pork chops. Yeah, yeah I agree. Let's, yeah. let's do a spicy yeah. rub, yeah. sweet yeah. sauce. We decide on a double cut pork chop, which seemed like the Cadillac of the meats, with an apple cranberry sauce. We need a side that's going to sustain them, something that's going to stand out. I think mac and cheese. I think mac and cheese. Yeah, bacon crumbles on there. Let's do it, guys. While Francis's red team quickly decides on a menu, over on Daniel's blue team, not everyone agrees on the choice of meat. Chicken. Yeah. Chicken is easy. I think beef. Chicken, you got to cook all the way through. My experience from cooking chicken on a grill for a bunch of people. Chicken dries out too much. It's a tricky protein. Give me flank steak any day over a chicken breast. I mean, that's a hockey puck in disguise. Nice chicken with sauce, barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce. Yeah, absolutely. And once again, I felt like I wasn't there. Like a southern like a style, style barbecue, yes. OK, I cast the vote for chicken, and the majority said the same thing, so that's what it was going to be. Now, um, side dish? Potatoes. Potato salad would be rad. Uh, Leslie, what are you doing? I'm just cleaning off the fat. Whose idea was it do chicken? Everybody. Everybody. Everybody, yes. Everybody what was your a group. idea? My idea? I would have went with steak. What do you think those soldiers would prefer, chicken or beef? I think beef, because if, not, if I'm out there, the last thing I want to do is see a chicken come in. Okay. I, want, I want a nice piece of beef and some, some, something really hearty. I, I, that's my opinion. It's my opinion. These pork chops are thick. They are thick. Take one, throw it on, start timing right. it. Guys, this is the biggest challenge ever. ever. Amazing. They're cooking for 500 US soldiers. We've never, ever done these numbers. This is double You're the right. biggest challenge we've ever had. Yeah. So this is like a whole nother yeah. level. Red Team is doing a pork chop and a bacon mac and cheese. How can you make mac and cheese without an oven? There's no way to get a crust. There's no way to do anything. It's going to be like cheesy Mush. noodles. And OK, oh. but you, if you can nail a bacon mac and cheese, you will win this. No. You think? I say it's very challenging, but it's high risk, high reward. We can cook off the pasta and hold it, but we got to time it well. The blue team, all American menu. Barbecue yeah. chicken with potato salad. Uh, well, first of all, I mean, wrong choice of protein for me. Chicken is crazy because to nail it and get it moist is very difficult. 500 portions, most likely it's going to be dry. If you're going to serve dry chicken to 500 soldiers, that sauce better be good. Need a little, little heat. And we got cayenne, we got jalapeno. Let me go track. Red team, blue team, 45 minutes gone, 75 minutes prep left to go. Almost halfway through their prep time, both teams begin the daunting task of grilling over 500 portions of meat. All right, Cutter, what's going on, man? Going good, going good, getting the pork chops on. Are you sure you want them that far from the heat? This is an, a, a giant two-inch pork chop. I can put my hands here, and there's like nothing going on. This is like worse than microwaving them. They're literally just going to steam. We need to get some more cold. You got to get a flame going. You got to get it hot. I am not concerned. With Victoria, me and Tyler on the grill, you know, me and Victoria from Texas, Tyler, a country boy, we can make this work. That's delicious rub, though. That's great. While Cutter takes charge of the red team's pork chops, on the blue team, Leslie is panicking that Stephanie's chicken is undercooked. These are not done. These are not done. They're not done. Oh, that one is. Yeah, yeah. no, 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 no. Look. OK. I, I know. Leslie is driving me up the wall. He's always in my face, running his yap, talking too much, and he really needs to back off. It feels, it feels soft. It looks soft. No, that's good. OK. That's, good. You're, that's your station. Do what you feel, and it's going to work. The last thing you want is raw chicken. Or otherwise, you're going to walk out with a, with a lot of sick people here. How many portions have you got cooked? 
Two pans in the hot box. There's two in the hot yes. box? Yes. That's raw. Hey, blue team. Yes, Chef. Pass me a knife. Let's go. All of you, let's go. Stand over here. Who checked this chicken? I did. Raw. Raw chicken. Seriously? So you didn't cut the chicken open? You didn't check the chicken to see if it was done? None of that? This chicken right now is more dangerous than the enemy. Honestly, guys, get a grip! In the most ambitious challenge in MasterChef history, both red and blue teams race to prepare a meal for 500 hungry soldiers. But just 45 minutes into their prep, Gordon discovers that Stephanie's chicken is raw. Honestly, guys, hey, we should be embarrassed. I am. Stephanie, I told you, I may be 56, but I know what the hell I'm talking about. I know raw chicken when I feel it. Team captain, if she doesn't know how cooked chicken looks like, feels like, put someone else on the job. Come on! You need to cover the tops with temple. Keep the heat in the grills. Put some pans on top of it. Long trays, not those trays, the longer trays. I need those trays. Put them on top of the meat. Under 45 minutes until the cavalry arrives. While the blue team attempts to rescue their raw chicken, on the red team, it's Captain Francis's mac and cheese side dish that is in serious danger. Stop. Are you kidding me? How is that mac and cheese? So look, it's all separating. Tossing in four pounds of cheese with five pounds of pasta and like two gallons of heavy cream, it just didn't all cook together. Francis B, are you telling me that soldiers don't know the difference between mac and cheese and mac and This is not good, guys. This is not good. How's uh, Francis B doing as captain? Uh, headless chicken, headless really? chicken, mac and cheese. Didn't make a cheese sauce, just cold cream with grated cheese. Shocking. What's Red Team going to do? Are they still going to serve this mac? I just don't know. Although I tried the rub, and it's quite good. Have we tried a slice of pork? No, because no. there's not a finished pork chop yet. No. You okay. should probably have 100 pork chops cooking by now. Yeah. Red Team, Blue Team, just under 30 minutes to go. Yeah, we need to get on it. We need 20 pans. I'm seriously worried about the Red Team. I mean, they're behind massively. Right. Let's check these. So the Blue Team. I think Daniel is an appointed captain. He has level-headed, good enthusiasm, made some good decisions. Stephanie, how you doing? You got it together now? I got it. I think blue team's got it, just because yeah. red doesn't have it. Turn it up, you guys. Come on, let's go. With service rapidly approaching, Joe and Graham head over to the red team to check on the status of their side dish. Coleslaw, what happened to the mac and cheese? We had to think of something else. How many tubs are you guys going to be able to fill? You got to do 500 plates. Five? Five, five, at least. So five tubs is about 150 of these. And so far, you're shaving about one every five minutes, which puts you in bad shape. It does. Good luck. Keep on shaving. 10 minutes to go. Soldiers are starting to gather, guys. Look out on the horizon. You see tanks, and you see helicopters, and you see all these people starting to gather. You think you know what 500 soldiers is going to look like? No, you don't realize what 500 soldiers looks like. It's equal parts invigorating and mildly terrifying. Victoria, how many pork left to cook? We have a lot, Chef. Hundreds. Get that pork on. Come on, speed up. At this point, if we can't get the team together and we can't get this dish onto a plate, we're truly buggered. 15 seconds to go. These are not ready. This might be the biggest challenge or the biggest disaster we have ever seen on MasterChef today. I need more plates. Let's go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's go, guys. We're open for business. Hi, guys. How are you? Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so guys. much for your service. You the Master Chef battle is on.
Each of the 500 soldiers will taste both the red and blue team's dishes, then vote for their favorite. There you go, pork chop for ya. The red team is serving a double cut pork chop with an apple chutney and coleslaw. Here you go, thank you. The blue team is serving grilled chicken with barbecue sauce and a side of potato salad. Let's go, hurry up, they're waiting, they're waiting. Once that service starts, this whole thing turns into chaos. I'm in the weeds on the grill, the slaw's in the weeds. My arms are physically about to fall off my body. I need more pork chops on my side. Francis, I'm trying, brother. I'm a little bit worried. Those pork chops are so thick, and it's slow getting them to cook. Francis B, look at the line. The line's backed up. Come on, guys. You guys, we're getting a big delay from the red team, so that means we're doing great. As the red team scrambles to keep up with the endless line, Graham heads to the soldiers to see whose dish is winning hearts and minds. Hi. Hi. What do we think between the red and the blue? I like the blue better because the red was kind of tough. It, it's kind of hard to get to. I like the, the blue one better. The seasoning is good. The mm -hmm. sauce is good. I like the way that they presented it. You guys, we are killing it. Well, the red team's food, you can see that it's raw, not even cooked. I don't know what else to say other than it's horrible. That's not cooked. That is not cooked. Victoria, they're not done. They're not. No. I can't vote for the red team. I mean, just look at the meat. It's, it's raw. Hey, red team, get your ass over here. All of you! Look, they're raw. This is like my worst nightmare. And as team captain, I know I'm screwed. Team captain, my ass. Raw pork to these guys? Are you kidding me? We are in big trouble. As far as I'm concerned, if we serve these troops raw pork, we should all go home. Look at the respect you've got for the soldiers. Get your together. Hey, hey guys, I'm going to stop you here. Get a grip. Having discovered raw pork being served to the soldiers, Gordon forces the red team to radically change their cooking strategy. Butterfly the pork. On yes, it. chef. Look at Cutter. Great idea. Butterfly it. That's a faster cook over time. With the red team stalled and time running out, the blue team is quick to entice the hungry soldiers to their station. We got plenty of chicken over here. They're just walking by without pleats. We're happy to be able to feed y'all. <laughs> Three minutes on support. We got so behind and so in the weeds, I'm not even sure how many people we missed. I'm definitely thinking we could be in trouble. Every time a soldier doesn't pick up your ball, you're losing a vote. Come on. Despite a large number of soldiers who did not receive a plate from the red team, those who did have strong opinions. Definitely going to vote for the red plate. It was way better. It's like the best pork chop I've ever had. The best pork to that again? Yeah. It's the best one I've ever had. In your life? In my life, yes. I mean, what's the feedback? I mean, the thing is, everyone that got pork loves it. I mean, if they could keep it consistent, I mean, they have a shot. So I don't know if they're able to pull it back now or not, but I mean, their pork was good. The blue team picked a less ambitious menu, but at least were able to execute it. Nothing went out raw. I got pork coming out right now. Good job on the butterfly, guys. They're cooking great. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for waiting. I need more chicken. Let's go. I'm sweating bullets. It's so many people. It's crazy. Let's go, guys. Come on. It seems like the chicken was just like something that you know, we could have got at the store. Last 50 soldiers. Come on, let's go. Last 50 soldiers, you guys. Push it out. The pork chop was great. It was uh, nice and juicy. And the coleslaw was amazing. 20 soldiers to go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go, Cutter. Let's go. The chicken had a little spice to it, so I, I really like that. Definitely going with the red plate. Let's go, red team! Red team, last soldier. Let's, Let's go, go, guys. Go. Make it look good. Thank you. Yeah. I knew we had a winning dish, but the only thing going through my mind is how many plates do we lose that we not put any food on? Thank you so much. We rose to the occasion as a team, feeding 500 people. And even though that sounded incredibly daunting, we nailed it. With service completed, Joe heads out for a final check-in with Fort Irwin's top commanders. General, what is the opinion of our top dog? 
I think I'm going, going for the red. red. Pork chop. So, General's going for the red. Who's voting red on this table? Raise your hand. One, two, three. Who's voting blue? One, two, three. Dead tie. It's time for the vote. When given the order, all 500 soldiers will line up in front of the team whose food they liked best. The team with the most soldiers on their side is the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like personally to thank each and every one of you for your bravery and your service to this amazing country. These home cooks cook their hearts out, but there can only be one winning team. On the count of three, please step into position. One, two, three. Look at him, look at him. We're seeing them line up one by one, and it's looking like it's really close. We got 500 plates, didn't miss one. I feel really confident. The winning team today, the team that is safe from elimination with 300 and 29 votes. Congratulations to the red team. Yeah! Cooking for 500 troops and knowing that way more than half of them liked our stuff over theirs, it's ridiculous. We put ourselves out there on the plate and we worked really hard to get where we were at. It was a huge win, it was a landslide. Blue team, that means you'll be facing the dreaded pressure test. Clear down. Let's go. I was shocked. Was their dish that significantly better than ours? Anybody can cook pork chops. I don't even know how they won. They missed a lot of plates. That doesn't make sense to me. I'm really confused right now. I'm not happy. I am not a happy camper right now. Red team! Red team! Welcome to the real world. I'm pissed that the blue team's going into the pressure test. The chicken was just a bad choice. If they would have listened to me and, and chose the beef, we probably could have won. We made a decision yesterday to commit as a team. So we can be friends afterwards, but while the pressure test is on, we gotta come out swinging and you gotta knock each other out. Yesterday, we asked you to serve a heroic meal to over 500 brave men and women of America's armed forces. Both teams fought valiantly, but in every battle, there can be just one victor. Red team, you overcame incredible odds to win the biggest challenge that we've ever done in the history of MasterChef. Francis B, great job. Thank you, Chef. Unfortunately, for the 10 home cooks standing in front of us, you will be facing the dreaded pressure test. At least one of you home cooks will leave the MasterChef kitchen tonight. It's now time to face your very first pressure test. But not all of you are going to have to compete. Three of you We'll watch this pressure test from the comfort of the balcony, safe from elimination. Daniel, you were big enough to put yourself out there as the team captain. Now it's time to be an even bigger man and decide who's safe from this dreaded pressure test tonight. I know I bust my ass. I deserve to be on that balcony. You know what you need to be doing right now. You better think very hard. Tell me your first person I believe this person worked very hard, and nobody deserves to be up there more than Christian. All right, Christian, up to the balcony. You're safe from elimination. Second choice, 
This person did a great job yesterday. They were Johnny on the spot. They were where they needed to be. Gordon showed up. Wow. Please, come to the balcony. Daniel, before you make your final pick, you can, of course, save yourself from elimination. Tough one. I chose to be captain yesterday. And captain goes down with his ship, so I'm going to stay down here. Wow. I'm screaming to the heavens for joy. Pick me, pick me. If anybody deserves this, it's me, because I did everything right. I'm sending this person up to the balcony today because I don't want them in here with me today going head to head. That person is Dan. Off you go. Are you kidding me? That was it. Daniel made a big mistake not saving me. I set my target right on his back. At least one of you will be going home based on how you cook the dish that we are about to show you. Blueberry pie. <sighs> Blueberry pie! You've got to be getting me. It feels like a tailor-made pressure test for me. We're looking for one stunning blueberry pie, something worthy of this pie's amazing tradition in this country. As you slice through that delicious pastry, you should hear that crisp crunch. I don't bake. If it had been the other way, where they say, here's the dish, now pick three people and you can save yourself, I would have gone upstairs. Now look at that filling, bursting with an amazing blueberry flavor. And a good pie filling always holds together. When you do this dish, Justice is an absolute perfect slice of Americana. OK, it's time to head to your station. Honestly, I don't bake a lot. So I want to show the judges that I think outside of the box and that I'm not your average home cook. Jamie. Yes, sir. What is that on the side of your neck? It's blueberry pie. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, this challenge was tailor-made for you. I hope so. <laughs> You have 75 minutes to prepare and bake us a delicious blueberry pie. You all have the exact same ingredients to make your blueberry pie shine. You'll also have access to a limited pantry of ingredients that can help your blueberry pie stand out from the competition. Right, your 75 minutes starts now. Looking at the seven that we have cooking right now, what are your predictions? I think Jamie, tonight's her night to shine. Really? She's going to show us what she has. Elise, I think she overthinks it. I think the minute she has a mistake, she sort of disintegrates. With Stephanie, the problem is she's going to get into that pantry and start using everything, and it's all going to go to hell. Daniel chose to stay to cook. Could you imagine if he goes home? Oh, doesn't look too comfortable right now. But the secret of a great blueberry pie, obviously, the foundation of the pastry. Right. That's the bit that sets the tone. If you want to make it your own, what do you add? Lemon zest, lime zest, so it's got that tangy effect. For me, I think mint, just to steep and then take it out, so it kind of perfumes it. These things take at least minimum 45 minutes to cook. Right. So they've got to be in the oven the first 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm nervous. I've already made the judges blueberry pie once. They weren't huge fans, so if I can't get it right the third time, I'm going to be really disappointed in myself. Stephanie, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good right now. What's your twist on this one? Um, I'm throwing some pecans in the crust. Have you done that before? I've never even made a blueberry pie. They take minimum 50 minutes to cook. That means you have to get this in the oven in the next 10. I got it under control. Careful overworking that. <laughs> Jamie, Hi, how's it going? So what would you put of this? Blood orange zest, some blood, blood orange, orange juice. That's a good idea. Very citrus focused, huh? Yeah. You chose to tattoo the blueberry pie to your neck. Right. It's like a homage to where I grew up. You think that yours is strong enough to be the best here? I sure as hell hope so. How's Captain doing? He's restarting. Uh, Daniel. Yes, Chef. How are you doing? The second time you made the pastry? Yes, sir. What happened to the first one? I got the mixture incorrect, so I had to start over. Uh, that looks nice. Yeah, knead it together um, and then get rolling. Good luck. Yes, chef. Thank you. All right, guys. Just over 40 minutes left to cook. You should have your blueberry pies in the oven by now. I'm kind of nervous about Elisa's. She was running out of time. She put the whole 
pie crust on top. Is she the only one who didn't do a lattice top? Yes. Slightly concerned about the texture of the pastry of Stephanie's. She's got these pecans. Risky to put pecans in the crust. So that's going to be a nightmare to slice. Mm -hmm. Daniel's 15 minutes behind. He needs to get that thing in the oven or he is going to go home. Just get it in there. Everybody else has their pie in the oven. Daniel, finish it and put it in the oven. Get it in the oven. Let's go. Don't worry about it. I might go home because my pie is not going to get cooked in time, and there's not a damn thing I can do about it. He needs uh -huh. to get that thing in the oven, or he's going to go home. Get it in the oven. Let's go. Don't worry about it. Daniel, you need to put that in the oven. What are you doing? Everybody has their pie in the oven. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm the last one to get it in and by a pretty substantial margin. Now, I get to sit and watch and silently pray that my pie is edible by the time that clock expires. Right now, I think Daniel's going home. I think he got his pie in kind of late. Revenge is sweetest when it's paid in the end. And I'm a happy pie maker. I'm nervous. It's going to be close for me. 60 seconds to go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands in the air. Well done. Right, time to taste those stunning blueberry pies. But more importantly, find out who's about to leave the master kitchen. First up, Jamie. Explain to me exactly what your pie is. I did it in an orange scented blueberry filling. It has a little orange juice, orange liqueur, and then a little bit of cinnamon, allspice, and ginger. You have a slice of blueberry pie in your neck and bake written on your hands. This had better be like the most life-changing pie <laughs> of all I time. I sure hope it is. The lattice work is beautiful. The overall flavor is awesome. The floral component makes so much sense. And the crust is nice and flaky. You pretty much lived up to the, the tattoos. Good job. Oh, thank god. That's impressive. Hey. The orange aspect really lifts it up. Your crust is perfect. You certainly earned your ink today. Good job, Jamie. Thank you very much. The combination of the blossom water, blueberries, bloody delicious. You've done yourself, the tattoo, the pie justice. Thank you. And you are now the most famous blueberry tart in New Jersey. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Elise, please, let's go. I know everyone's going to be watching this pie because I have made them several times, and everybody knows that I'm a baker, so there is no failure option. Describe the pie, please. Blueberry pie with mascarpone, lavender, brown sugar, and lemon zest. Is this your lucky number three pie? I hope so, Chef. OK. You can see under there, the pastry's raw. It's almost like a pie's your nemesis. I'm struggling. There's way too much flour, undercooked base. Young ladies like eating a mouthful of sand. I'm lost for words. Didn't really even cook. You know, in a pressure test, it's right or wrong. And this, unfortunately, is wrong. The only chance you have is somebody else being worse than yours. OK, next is Jordan. It's a play on your basic everyday American blueberry pie, but add some lemon zest and also some brandy to uh, deepen that flavor. Does that white flour look like it's raw or cooked to you? Doesn't look very cooked. Raw flour is one of my pet peeves. Definitely like the lemon zest and brandy. I can taste that. Your crust is sloppy. It's altogether a little sloppy. Next up, 
Courtney. I made a fresh blueberry pie with Meyer lemon zest and a lattice crust. The pie's delicious. Uh, great colour, great crisp on the pastry. Is there anything you can't do? I guess when we find it, we'll all know. Thank you. Next up, Leslie. Please describe your dish. It's a basic blueberry pie with butter in the crust and allspice, ginger, and cinnamon. Wow, it tastes awesome. It's like an apple pie and blueberry pie crashed into each other. Well, thank you very great much. Job, I appreciate Leslie. it. Leslie nails a pie. She's been around for a while, so you probably knew Betty Crocker. Next up, Stephanie, please. Describe the pie. It's a blueberry pie with brandy and cinnamon, and it's pecan crusted at the bottom, and then it's regular lattice and pecan crust on the top. Why so many pecans? But I know you're going to taste a lot of blueberry pie today, so I wanted to just make it different and for it to stand out. The pastry's crumbling like mad. I'm struggling. It's almost falling apart. I've never made a blueberry pie before. The pastry's undercooked, so it's doughy on the bottom. But the big issue for me is that it is so sweet, I wouldn't go near a second mouthful. I think the only person in here tonight that would like that pie would be Elise. You think this is better than Elise's? Considering that Elise is a baker, I think it is. Thank you. Thanks. OK, Daniel, let's go. I'm looking at Daniel. His crust didn't look like it was cooked all the way through. This is my redemption here, man. I want you to go home. You're gone. Talk about the pie. I made it very classic, very simple blueberry pie, adding a tiny bit of ginger to the filling. First of all, visually, it looks unappetizing. The lattice is uneven. Pastry's literally falling apart, so a huge crack on your pastry there. Well, unfortunately, it looks like you've got one foot out the door, because that looks bad. First of all, visually, it looks unappetizing. The lattice is uneven. Pastry's literally falling apart. So a huge crack on your pastry there. Well, unfortunately, it looks like you've got one foot out the door, because that looks bad. Wow, that came out better than I thought. The pastry's a mess, but the acidity's right, the sweetness is right, and the actual filling is somewhat delicious. Now, how you blended that correctly, I don't know. Let's just call it a fluke. Turn around, look at those six cooks behind you. Is there any of those six do you think that would have made the same decisions you made today? Uh, I don't know about them, but I'm the only guy that looks at myself in the mirror every morning. So I gotta be happy with the decisions I made. I think your honor is better than your pie. Unfortunately, for at least one of you, your journey ends tonight. Could all seven of you home cooks please come down front? Would the following people please step forward? Jamie, Courtney, and Leslie. Tonight, you three were absolutely top of the class with amazing blueberry pies. As a result, you were all safe from elimination. Please head up to the balcony. Thank you. Good job. Congratulations. Daniel and Jordan. Well, the bad news is you are both way off being the best tonight. But the good news for you two is there were worst in the class. Upstairs, you're safe. Elise and Stephanie, both of you clearly had the worst blueberry pies. Elise, your passion is your baking. 
It is. Tonight, I didn't get that. I understand, Chef. I'm horribly embarrassed about the product that I put in front of you three. Elise is such a sweetheart, but I just don't think she has what it takes to be here. Stephanie, tonight, you put a combination together that will never work. Pecans in a blueberry pie. Sadly, one of you is leaving us tonight. It's embarrassing to fail at something that people know that you can do. Elise, please step forward. Elise, I'm sorry, your pie was bad. We were expecting more. Unfortunately, Stephanie's was worse. Make your way up to the balcony. Stephanie, you made two big fundamental flaws. Combining those pecans inside the dough didn't work. The amount of sugar inside that pie was ridiculous. I'm sorry, your journey ends tonight in the MasterChef kitchen. Please take off your apron, place it on your bench. Good night. I feel very conflicted because I'm so happy to still be here, but I am sad to see Stephanie go. This, for me, is really the first time that a friend has had to leave. Today has been one of the hardest days. Next time on MasterChef. Keep your fingers back. A mystery box challenge <sighs> that's alive oh, whoa. and pinching. Excited now? <laughs> and then, an elimination test has an early front runner. It looks like a bomb has gone off on him. On the run. Do you have any extra yeast? No. Nope. No, no more yeast. Goodbye, Courtney. Resulting in a shocking farewell that's hard to swallow. What have you done? Uh... One potato, two potato.